Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the schools have been closed during the Christmas vacation. And our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has spent hers quite enjoyably. Yes, indeed. During the days preceding Christmas, there was the thrill of wondering what kind of gifts I'd receive. Then in the days following, there's been the thrill of wondering what I'd get in exchange for the Christmas gifts I receive. <laughs> By last Thursday, though, I had made up my mind and paid a visit to the exchange counter of Sherry's department store. Pardon me, are you in charge here? Yes, ma'am. Dale is the name. Rex Dale. And who might you be? I might be Mrs. Boynton if I keep my New Year's resolution. <laughs> right now, the name is Constance Brooks. Several of my friends have purchased gifts here that I'd like to exchange. I see. First of all, there's the plastic monstrosity in this box. <laughs> that doesn't seem quite the way to talk about a gift from a friend, Miss Brooks. This happens to have been presented to me my, by my principal, Mr. Conklin. And believe me, it's terrifying. <laughs> no Christmas present freely given should be referred to as terrifying. Here, I'll open the box for you. There. <laughs> what in the world is it? It's a figure of Atlas carrying a globe. Only the globe is built in the shape of a round house which tells the changes in the weather by a small man and woman who pop out of their respective doors when you least expect them. But watch this on the back of the figure. He seems to have a red spine. That's a thermometer. And dangling from the thermometer is a small alarm clock. Oh, <laughs> oh now I recall this item. It must be quite popular. The gentleman who bought it ordered six of them. He said it was given to several members of the faculty. Well, there must be some place you could use it. Mr. Dale, this sort of thing was old-fashioned when Grandma was a girl. Where could it possibly fit in a modern home? Well, let's see. Do you have a fireplace in your living room? Yes, and I thought of the fireplace myself, but plastic doesn't burn very well. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the mantelpiece. Couldn't you uh, put it up there? I tried that, too, but my landlady keeps a canary in a cage on the mantelpiece. Well, isn't there room for them both? Yes, but I don't believe in being cruel to our feathered friends. <laughs> First time I put this thing next to the cage, the canary took one look at it and fell headfirst into his bird bath. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'd like to exchange this for some lingerie. Well, if you insist, Miss Brooks, I'll give you this credit slip. Uh, just show it to the clerk in the lingerie department. Oh, before you make it out, there's something else, Mr. Dale. These earrings were purchased here, too. Well, what's wrong with them? They're a trifle too ornate for me. Oh, nonsense. They're beautiful. Just look at the workmanship in those exquisite bra brass crowbars. <laughs> I'm afraid they're a little too heavy for me, Mr. Dale. Heavy? Well, let me heft them. All right, I'll put one on the counter. Here. Oop. <laughs> yes, they are a bit substantial, aren't they? Substantial? They pull my ears down so far, I look like a cocker spaniel. <laughs> I'll just get a nice manicure set instead. Very well, Miss Brooks. Anything else? Not much. I'd like to exchange this pen and pencil set for some stockings and these slippers for a handbag. Miss Brooks, wasn't there anything you received for Christmas that pleased you? Oh, yes, Mr. Dale. I have a blue and white scarf that I'm just delighted with. And who bought that for you? I did. <laughs> Now, if you'll give me those other exchange slips, I'll get the rest of my unshopping done. I don't like to rush you, but Walter Denton, a student of mine, has offered to pick me up in his car in a few minutes. Well, I wouldn't bank on it, Miss Brooks. What do you mean? If he's a student of yours, he's probably exchanged his car for a pogo stick. <laughs> It was nice of you to interrupt your holiday to give me this lift, Walter. For you, Miss Brooks, my yuletide spirit knows no bounds. <laughs> what kind of yuletide did you have, Walter? Oh, magnificent, Miss Brooks. Oh, you should have seen my house. The spirit of giving was rampant. Gifts for everybody all over the place. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. 
The Horn of Plenty was really loaded this Christmas. Well, you can't blame your father for relaxing on a holiday. You <laughs> mean there were lots of presents. What did you get, Walter? Oh, I got some lovely gifts, Miss Brooks. And didn't you notice anything different about this car when you got in? Let's see. The four fenders are still missing. The hood is still off the motor. The windshield hasn't been replaced yet. Yeah, go on. Something new has definitely been added. The convertible top is still absent. There's only half of a rear view mirror, and the glass is out of both doors. I can't figure it out, Walter. What's been added? Nylon seat covers. <laughs> Just what this car needed. <laughs> Who gave them to you? Both my mother and father. Together? Yeah, my father gave me a sweater and my mother gave me a muffler, and I exchanged them. <laughs> Mr. Dale was right, like teacher, like pupil. What did Harriet Conklin give you? Oh, do you like this plaid sport shirt I've got on? Yes, it's very attractive. Did Harriet get, get you that? No, but her keychain and 90 cents did. <laughs> Place, Miss Brooks. Safe and sound. <laughs> now, before you get out, Miss Brooks, would you mind telling me what Mr. Boynton got you for Christmas? I know Harriet was egging him on to get you something real personal and feminine. Oh, he almost got me something extremely personal, but I stopped him in time. Oh, what was he going to get? A stapler. <laughs> <laughs> He finally settled for a pair of very clever earrings shaped like crowbars, but just between us, I exchanged them for a manicure set. But why? What was wrong with the earrings? I couldn't get them on without a stapler. <laughs> Well, Connie, did you get all your exchanging done? Yes, Mrs. Davis, I got some wonderful things. Good. I'm glad to see you looking so chipper. You seemed pretty blue last night when Mr. Boynton broke a date with you. He couldn't help it, Mrs. Davis. He had to attend a meeting of the biology club. Besides, I enjoyed the movie I saw very much. What did you see, Connie? Born yesterday with Judy Holliday, Brad Crawford, and Bill Holden. Well, if they were all there, you couldn't have missed Mr. Boynton too much. <laughs> Oh, uh, before I forget, Connie, Mr. Conklin called twice while you were out. Mr. Conklin? What did he want? I'm not sure, Connie, but it's about some kind of a report or something. He wants you to help him with it. But this is my vacation. If he calls again, please tell him I'm out. Oh, I'm afraid you'll have to tell him yourself, dear. I'm going out in the garden. One of our crawling vines has tripped over the garage door. <laughs> Well, I won't be home very long anyway. Maybe he won't. Then again, maybe he will. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Davis. This is Osgood Conklin again. Has Miss Brooks come in yet? Miss Brooks? There is no Miss Brooks here. Uh, this is Main 2496, isn't it? Oui, this is the French and Laundry. Fifi speaking. <laughs> The girl in charge of the mangle. <laughs> Who are you look for, monsieur? I'm looking for a school teacher named Constance Brooks. A school teacher? Ooh la la, have you got the wrong number? <laughs> well, that's a reprieve for a while. Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Davis? Oh dear, she's out and back. Hello? Hello, this is the One Question for 1000 program. We're trying to contact Miss Constance Brooks. What? If Miss Constance Brooks can answer one simple question, we have $1,000 in cold, hard cash waiting to be sent to her. $1,000? This is Miss Brooks. Are you absolutely <laughs> certain you are Miss Brooks? Of course. What's the question? The question is, how could you and the French hand laundry have switched phone numbers so quickly? <laughs> Hello? Get away from that mangle, Fifi. Or I'll really take the starch out of your sale. Hello? Isn't this Mr. Conklin? 
I guess you must have gotten our party line, sir. I... All right, all right, Miss Brooks. We'll forget your little impractical joke. The reason I called is to thank you for your Christmas gift to me. Oh, it was just a little remembrance, Mr. Conklin. You couldn't have chosen a more perfect reminder, Miss Brooks. Two big, heavy bookends. They, they just seem to sense that we haven't had any personal contact since Christmas. And yesterday, as if by magic, one of them toppled off the table and landed on my foot. <laughs> it was like old time. I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. If you'd rather have something else, I, I could... wouldn't part with those bookends if they eat up half my salary in band-aids. <laughs> See, Miss Brooks, in spite of your raffish and undisciplined displays of wit, I feel that you, like myself, are basically a sentimental person. When I receive a present, I feel it's a token of someone's affection, and I wouldn't dream of exchanging it for anything else. I presume you feel the same way? Hello? <laughs> I mean, certainly, Mr. Conklin. Uh, by the way, Miss Brooks... How did you like my gift to you? Oh, stunning, Mr. Conklin. Well, you know, for the longest time, I couldn't decide whether to buy something ornamental or utilitarian. Then I saw that figure of Atlas. And you gave up both ideas. <laughs> you combined both ideas. Yes, that's about it. Did you find the right spot for it, Miss Brooks? Perfect, Mr. Conklin. I'm keeping it right on the mantelpiece here in our living room. <laughs> Quiet, Dickie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, I, I'm glad to hear it, Miss Brooks. I'll be able to kill two birds with one stone, then, when you assist me with my report to the Parent Teachers Association. But, Mr. Conklin, this is my vacation. Uh, and it's mine, too, Miss Brooks, but this is for the first important meeting of the new year. So I'll be over to your place in about an hour, at which time I can see how effective my atlas looks in your living room. But, Mr. Conklin, you can't come here. The, the house is a mess. Mrs. Davis is in the midst of her spring cleaning. Spring cleaning? <laughs> but this is the middle of the winter I know, but she likes to give herself plenty of time <laughs> If you don't believe she's doing her spring cleaning You can ask her yourself, Mr. Conklin Mrs. Davis! you, Mrs. Davis! Sorry, sir, she must be out in the kitchen Dying Easter eggs <laughs> Well, tell her to save me a pink one I'll be there in an hour Oh, no. This is a fine spot to be in. Did you call me Connie? It's too late now, Mrs. Davis. Too late for what? For me to get down to Sherry's and get Mr. Conklin's present back. He's coming over here in an hour to give me some dictation, and he expects to see it on the mantelpiece. Oh, forgive my absent mind, Connie, but there were so many gadgets here around this Christmas that I just don't remember Mr. Conklin's gift. What was it? A plastic figure of Atlas with a big globe on his head that tells the weather, and a thermometer spine, and also an alarm clock. Oh, where in the world is the alarm clock? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What a cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Clean your breath. What a toothpaste. What a clean your teeth. Colgate dental cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over, over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate dental cream helped stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, when I had calmed down a bit, I realized that Mr. Conklin had perpetrated his Atlas clock on several other members of the faculty. So the only question was, from whom to borrow one? Then Mrs. Davis reminded me that Mr. Boynton had received one, and there was no more question. 
I had never seen Mr. Boynton's new apartment, and this seemed like as good a time as any. Be right there. Well, Miss Brooks, this is a surprise. Come on in. Thanks, Mr. Boynton. Here, here, let me take your coat. All right. So this is your new apartment. May I look around? Go right ahead. Aren't you coming with me? Well, you don't have to go anywhere. This is all there is to it. <laughs> and please don't mind the appearance of the place. After all, what can you do with a bachelor? There must be a non-censorable answer to that. <laughs> Don't you find this place a bit confining for a big, husky, broad-shouldered, dashing, vital... I forgot what I started to say. <laughs> you, you were wondering if I found this apartment confining. Actually, I don't, Miss Brooks. I don't spend very much time in it, but when I'm here, I, I rather like the compactness of it. Of course, it, it's different with a girl. I, I don't suppose you'd care for a tight squeeze. Try me. <laughs> place certainly wouldn't be any problem to keep clean. I, I'm afraid I don't pay any attention to that end of it. All you'd have to do is wrap yourself in a damp towel, get in the center of the room, and spin around a little. <laughs> well, it may be small, but this place has all the facilities of a larger apartment. Did you know that I have a two-burner electric stove in here? Really? Where? I keep it in my bread box. Oh, <laughs> oh in the kitchen. No, there's no kitchen. I just keep the bread box in the refrigerator. I give up. Where's the refrigerator? In the closet. <laughs> just, just open that door on your left. All right. I still don't see the refrigerator. Your coat's draped over it. Uh... <laughs> well, well, now that you're here, Miss Brooks, how would you like to stay to lunch? No, thanks, Mr. Boynton. I wouldn't want you to have to unwrap your kitchen just for me. Besides, I've got to be getting back to my place before Mr. Conklin comes to work with me. That's the real reason I dropped over, Mr. Boynton, to borrow the atlas Mr. Conklin gave you. What did you do with the one he gave you? I exchanged it for some lingerie. So did I. What color? <laughs> I mean, what am I going to do? He expects to see that atlas prominently displayed on my mantelpiece. Well, why don't you phone Mr. Conklin and tell him you went out without your keys and Mrs. Davis has left the house, too? I could do that. Then he'd probably suggest that I come over to his place. That wouldn't be so bad. Well, I don't have my phone in yet, Miss Brooks, but right on the corner there's a gas station or a candy store you can call from. I'll use the gas station. I'm on a little bit of a diet. <laughs> oh, before you go, Miss Brooks... I, I haven't seen you wear the earrings I got you for Christmas as yet. You will put them on for New Year's Eve, won't you? New Year's Eve? Well, yes. I, I've gotten hold of an extra ticket to the biology club dance. I took it for granted that you'd tag along. Then you can take it for granted that the earrings will drag along with me. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of presents, you don't seem to be wearing the cufflinks I gave you. The cufflinks... Oh, well, well, I'm saving those for New Year's Eve, too. Yes, sir. Well, you better run along now and phone Mr. Conklin. I guess we won't be seeing each other again until our date Sunday night. Oh, we'll see each other before that. When? It all depends on what time we both arrive to exchange our exchanges at the exchange counter. <laughs> over to your place, Mr. Conklin. Well, well, if you've lost your keys and Mrs. Davis is out, I suppose it's the only thing you can do, Miss Brooks. But my wife is having some folks in tonight, so we'll have to finish up at your place after dinner. Yes, sir, that'll give me plenty of time. That is, I'll see you soon, Mr. Conklin. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Harriet. Oh, Harriet. Here I am, Daddy. What can I do for you? Do you know what's been done with those two monstrosities that Miss Brooks gave me for Christmas? You mean those two cute bookends? Yes, those cute bookends. <laughs> Two green midgets with purple beard shoving their shoulders against yellow wheels. <laughs> Last time I saw them, your mother was cracking walnuts with them. Gosh, Daddy, Mother told me she exchanged them for a vase. What? But Miss Brooks is coming over here to work. She'll expect to see those twin nightmares on my desk. Well, there's only one thing I'll do. I I'll run down to Sherry's and try to get them back before she comes. It was just wonderful of you to drive me down here again, Walter. I've got to get back the atlas and Mr. Boynton's earrings at once. Oh, that's okay, Miss Brooks. 
I've got to get back the keychain Harriet gave me. Oh, did she ask you about it? Yeah. She said she expected me to wear it on New Year's Eve. Gosh, I wished I'd had my wits about me. I'd have asked her why she wasn't wearing the pearls I gave her. You gave Harriet pearls, Walter? Certainly not. But I know she's exchanged so many gifts it would have thrown a good scare into her. <laughs> too bad about the keychain, Walter. The shirt you exchanged it for looked lovely on you. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Oh, the thought of exchanging it distresses me deeply. I guess I'm just a sentimentalist at heart, Miss Brooks. A sentimentalist? Yes. When a person near and dear to me gives me a present, I hate to exchange it more than once. <laughs> well, here's the counter. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Dale? Remember me? Now, uh, don't tell me. Let's see. Oh, of course, you were the lovely lady who almost gave me a nervous breakdown this morning. And remember me? Certainly. You gave me a nervous breakdown yesterday. <laughs> oh, look, you two aren't going to start all over again, are you? No, Mr. Dale, this time it's going to be very simple. Oh, good. I'd like to turn in some lingerie and get back my atlas. But this morning you were practically livid about the... That was this morning. Then I'd like to turn in my manicure set and get back my earrings. Yeah, and I'd like to turn in my sports shirt and get back my keychain. I have a dispatch for you both. <laughs> I'd like to turn in this job and get back my sanity. <laughs> I'll make, make out your exchange slips in just a moment, but first, Miss Brooks, you've got to do me a small favor. What is it? Just stand behind this counter for one moment while I go out for a smoke. I'm beginning to feel my nerves nibbling at the base of my skull like mice. Oh, but Mr. Dale, There won't I... be too many customers at this time of day, but if anyone does come over, just be courteous. By that, I mean be sure to say please when you ask them to drop dead. <laughs> oh, he'll never make a good exchange, clerk. Too sensitive. Well, while we're waiting for him, I'm going to look at some sports equipment over in the next aisle. But you can't leave me behind this counter all alone, Walter. Why not? It might open up a whole new career to you. Especially if you don't get Mr. Conklin's atlas back in time. Now listen, Walter, say... I'll see you later, Miss Brooks. And don't forget to say please. Oh, dandy. This is turning out to be some vacation. Oh, pardon me, miss, but I'd like to swap this pen knife for... Miss Brooks. You can't have Miss Brooks for that pen knife. <laughs> <laughs> what in the... Mr. Boynton. Well, I was just going to say blazes. Oh, then go right ahead. What in the blazes are you doing behind this counter? I'm just pinch-hitting for a busy friend. A busy friend? Yes, he's brushing some mice off the base of his skull. <laughs> Is there something I can do for you, Mr. Boynton? Well, there, there, there was something I wanted to exchange for something else, but uh, I, I'll wait until the regular clerk comes back. But he may never come back. The mice may brush him off. <laughs> Why don't you tell me what it is you want to exchange? Well, no, I, I couldn't, Miss Brooks. It's, it's rather personal. Pardon I'm... me, young man. Pardon me. <laughs> Miss, I'd like to swap this vase for... Miss Brooks. You can't have Miss Brooks for that vase. <laughs> Not even if you threw in a penknife. But what in the... Blazes am I doing behind this counter? <laughs> exactly. And you, Boynton, what are you doing here? Well, I have something I'd like to exchange, Mr. Conklin. A deplorable practice exchanging gifts shows an abysmal lack of consideration for those who presented them to you. What are you doing here, Mr. Conklin? For me? I've just been doing some last-minute shopping. I've never been near this exchange counter since Sherry's opened its doors to the public. Oh, me either, but today well, I just... Well, Miss Brooks, I feel a little better now. Thanks for... Well, what do you know? It's a Madison High reunion. <laughs> Oh, then you know these gentlemen, Mr. Dale. Know them. Since Christmas, we've been practically living together. <laughs> I see. This chunky boy with the malignant mustache has been back about nine times. <laughs> quiet, Dale, quiet. But, Mr. Conklin, I thought you didn't believe in exchanging gifts. I, I don't, Miss Brooks. It's just that, well, I was down here with my wife a couple of times. A couple of times? He was here so often, I thought he was trying to turn her in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hot one <laughs> Well, I'll be running along now I've got... One moment, Mr. Boynton <laughs> Mr. Dale, has this tall gentleman been down here too? Has he? He's the most insidious type of all Insidious? He's the sort who expects the Brooklyn Bridge in return for a pair of cufflinks <laughs> So, Mr. Boynton, you did exchange the cufflinks I gave you Well, what are you complaining about? You turned in the atlas he gave you, didn't you? That was the atlas I gave you, Miss Brooks <laughs> How could you do it? I hate to see a canary bird with a limp. <laughs> a 
anyway, you're a fine one to talk, mustache. You turned in the desk lamp she gave you. Desk lamp? Well, that's what I gave you, Mr. Conklin. Well, what about those earrings that pulled down your ears, Miss Brooks? <laughs> and more important than any of this, what about getting out that report of mine to the Parent Teachers Association? You're right, Mr. Conklin. I'll settle this matter of gifts once and for all, Mr. Dale. I'm going to turn in everything I've received this Christmas for just two presents for these gentlemen. Two presents? Yes. Give Mr. Boynton a cocker spaniel and Mr. Conklin a workhorse. <laughs> Garden returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap... Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to... A lost a cream shampoo. And here's a New Year's greeting card to each and every one of you in 51, a year of love, happiness, contentment, and joy from the makers of Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is Eve Arden. Freedom is everybody's job. That's why all of us must work to keep our individual rights and freedoms by voting in an informed way serving willingly on juries and public committees, and taking an interest in the development of our community, state, and country. That way, we can all make 1951 a year that will prove the strength and success of democracy. And now, on behalf of my sponsor, the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company, and myself, a very happy new year to all of you. Good night. This is Vern Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Arthur Alsberg, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Joseph Kearns. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.